Welcome back to the channel, hey everybody. Meteorologist Craig Majeski back with you here on the Weather Nerds YouTube channel with the weather report here on your January the 7th, 2026. And we got plenty, plenty to talk about here on this update. We're gonna talk about uh, the potential for some severe weather. That'll be coming here for the next few days here as we watch for a pretty strong cold front move in across uh, the eastern portion of the United States uh, from the South Central Plains. Talk about this pattern change that's coming at us. We're gonna see the return of some cooler, colder weather across the you know, eastern half of the United States. The West still kind of holding on to very warm weather out there for the most part for January standards. And then we're gonna talk about the polar vortex. That was your thumbnail today. It is really showing up in a very big way on the European model here as we head like deeper into the month of January. And there's some variables at play about how much of an influence or how much of an impact we're gonna see across the United States. I'm gonna explain that in greater detail here on this update. Now, before we get into all this, if you're new here to the channel, let me introduce myself. I'm meteorologist Greg Majeski. I'm your no-nonsense weather guy. There's enough weather hype out there in social media to, to uh, you know, choke a horse out there. And uh, we like to try to give it to you straight so you can plan accordingly. Our motto here is real simple, to keep you safe, stay prepared, and not scared, okay? All right, let's go ahead and talk about our extremes yesterday. We had a minus two there in Mammoth Lakes, California, Northern California there, in Hildago, Texas, typical warm spot there in Southern Texas hit 90 yesterday. All right, so we're looking at our satellite picture. We got a couple things we can point out. We got a little storm system up here across the northeast and some snow is up that way. And we got a little moisture here streaming in across uh, portions of the, the southwest. It's good to see that subtropical get a little more active. Haven't seen a lot of that this year, uh, this winter. We definitely needed to get a little more active. And we got another storm system up here in the Pacific Northwest coming in as well. I'll give you a better uh, look at that here, uh, looking at the western uh, that satellite imagery there. So you can see that storm system approaching the Washington State area there. In California, you guys are going to get a chance to dry out. The, with the weather pattern changing the way it is, we're going to have some huge ridging out in the west. So you guys, after getting a lot of rain here, are going to start to turn dry here for an extended period here for the second half of the month of January. Now looking at our surface map here, again, you can see those snows falling up here across areas of the northeast. Coming up through, they're not looking too bad there. Again, here's some of that moisture here across the southwest. And that onshore flow kind of coming in here across the Pacific Northwest. A little snows there across portions of Idaho and Montana. Boy, they were really in a bit of a snow drought out there in the west. They could sure use some as they've been getting just at the higher elevations. A lot of ski lodges could use some more snow. And if the pattern turns colder, they'll get a better opportunity for that. But not looking all that bright right now. And now we are looking at uh, very warm temperatures here across the southeast. And one thing when you get this warm weather, especially this time of year, you get strong temperature inversions and then that turns into fog. And boy, do we got a lot of it out there here this morning, stretching from the Carolinas going all the way back here toward Texas. A lot of fog there. Got some there across portions of uh, New Jersey here in the uh, Iowa, Illinois area. Got some down here toward Florida as well. So we got fog kind of all over the place. Out in the west, we got uh, some, you see the, the the pink areas. That's your winter storm warnings up there in the Cascade Mountains, and some winter weather advisories kind of here and there. And you got some uh, got some winter storm warnings there across uh, portions of New Mexico as well, with some of that moisture coming up there. So we got a little bit of winter weather there as well. Now speaking of that, some of that uh, some of that winter weather, some of the heavier snow is up there toward uh, this is up the coast of Maine, and boy, it gets some what we call very uh, bright banding. And when you see it, kind of looks like heavy rain there a little bit. When you see that kind of come through there, uh, that means some uh, pretty decent heavy snows there right along the coast there, running up through Maine. So I thought that was pretty interesting to see here for this morning. Now let's go ahead and talk about our severe weather here. We got a few days we're going to watch this. So let me go ahead and pull that up real quick. As you can kind of see, uh, we've got a few things we're watching here, obviously. We got the we got that green area there. You see that? That is where the uh, severe weather there is expected there across portions of, of Oklahoma here. So we got that right here. Here's that right through there. Got a few thunderstorms here on the West Coast, but nothing severe out there. So uh, that's your day one outlook here uh, for today on Wednesday. Let's go to your day two. Bigger area here. We're going to zoom in a little bit closer. We got a little bit here across, uh, again, the Southwest with some of that moisture coming up that way. And you see in it, we got Illinois, Missouri, uh, Oklahoma. We're talking Texas, uh, Louisiana, and Arkansas. So we're talking areas like you know, Little Rock is in this as well. The outskirts of Dallas, Norman, Oklahoma, Springfield, St. Louis, all in this uh, version. So that is your day two for Thursday. And then day three, a little more significant. Got a slight risk in here uh, going across the southeast. So we're talking about Tennessee, Alabama, Mississippi, Louisiana, Arkansas, all in that zone right there. I'll zoom in a little bit closer for you there. 
and you see the margin risk kind of coming in northwest Georgia, Tennessee, and kind of surrounding that area. So that's going into Friday. We'll have the categorical breakdown tomorrow. And uh, there's no day four for the southeast yet. I think that's still possible. So uh, for you folks over in Georgia and the Carolinas, it may proceed over that way. The timing and speed is going to be the big thing on this. At this time of year, you really got to look at uh, the daytime heating plays a bigger factor because, uh, uh, you know, we, you don't have a lot of warmth to work with here. These thunderstorms feed off those warmer conditions as it allows the air to lift a little bit better. And so you got to have the right conditions to line up just right to get severe weather, especially in January. All right. As compared to, say, April. All right. Now, let's go ahead and get into the model data here. Let's go talk about the uh, intermediate run here as we're looking at the, the 60. And we're kind of watching, uh, again, a couple of systems coming on. Let me slow this down here a little bit for you here. All right. So we're watching that one system there kind of clear out of the northeast. So that's going to clear on out. And you see that little upper level disturbance running into the southwest. So that's what's bringing in the snows and some of that rain here across the southwest down here. Got another storm system out here on the west coast moving in as well. So we've got a couple of things we're watching there. Now watch this system out of the southwest ploy. As this thing pulls north, it's going to grab some of that cold air and drag it down behind it. So this is going to bring in that severe weather going into Thursday afternoon. So that is what, that's what's responsible for that, that severe weather you saw there in blue. We're going to tap some of this uh, cold air behind this system, and it's going to, this is the initial start of our pattern change we're going to see here across the country. Okay, So this pulls onto the east, drags the cold front here across the south. Still got this ridging, and that's what's slowing this thing down a little bit. You see this ridging taking place right through here. That's going to come in, and unfortunately, that means for you folks in the Carolinas, I don't think you're getting a lot of, a lot of, a lot of uh, rain out of this. I think you're going to, it's going to weaken as it comes on in, but that's the end of the run uh, going in toward 1 o'clock on Saturday. So we're going to tap some cold air behind this thing. See the low pressure there and our cold front coming on through. Got another system out here. And then we're also going to see uh, the west is really going to shut down. They're going to really see a big ridging out there in the west as we go deeper into the month of January. All right. Now, as far as the precipitation, heavy rains, the best two locations are going to be, obviously, with that cold front here. And because it's slowing down, we're going to have thunderstorms. We've got some heavy rains right through here. And we've got some heavy rains up here across areas of the northeast, uh, the northwest as well. So we do have a couple of areas we've got to watch for potential um, uh, flooding potential that's going to be there. In fact, uh, I want to go back and, and show you that real quick as well. So let's go back over to this. And I'll show you the, the excessive rainfall totals here. So we're going to go out here for day one. Uh, not looking too bad out there on day one. Day two, uh, again, not looking too bad there on day two. So it's day, it is all day three. I was just double checking, making sure that it had not been updated. So it's this area here across the south. As that front's going to get hung up a little bit because of that ridge and a little piece of energy coming out there. Could be some uh, decent heavy rains. I think the for the most part, Tennessee, Alabama, Mississippi, they could probably take it because it's been so much on the dry side here over the last month. All right, let's go back over here to the model data here as we kind of look at this. As you can see, uh, we look at the potential snow here. As that system pulls out, we're going to pull some snows here across portions of Minnesota and into Wisconsin, Michigan. So we got some snows across the inner mountain region at the higher elevations. And we got a nice little track of snows here. Four inches, 10 inches here, kind of come up to the UP of Michigan, 14. So a nice little swath there as that low begins to track off toward the north. Nice little snows here. A little bit across New England. This is probably mostly here for today. Again, this takes us out until 1 o'clock on your Friday with the snows. And we'll go out beyond that here in just a second. All right. Now, here goes your temperatures today. I mean, this is your 4 o'clock temperature on Wednesday on January the 7th. I mean, this is unusual to see this kind of warm weather. Very little uh, areas below freezing except for the northeast, some intermountain high plains. But look how much of the country here is looking at above normal temperatures. Now, we're going to be beating this back. This is going to be going away here soon, uh, very slowly. But uh, as you can see there for Wednesday, very warm weather there. We're going toward tomorrow morning. Uh, a little colder out here in the west, but uh, look at these are morning lows in the 60s down along Texas and the Gulf Coast. It's very warm. Uh, only, I mean, 30s, mid 30s for lows. It's just very, very warm here across the Ohio River Valley here. Still stays warm. Look at this big old area yellow there in the 60s here in 70s here in Texas, 80s down across South Texas, obviously. A little bit of a wedge there showed up on Thursday there. Uh, and then as we go into this upcoming week, we're going to beat the front back. So you can see that front moving. See that front? It's moving on through. We're going to start shrinking that, that warm air and start getting it out there. So the initial cool down is one. And it looks like we're going to see a progression of, of progressively cold air masses. And I want to show this 
And obviously, this is going to stand out like a big sore thumb. You see it at the end here. So here on the short curve, okay? So we got our first little uh, dash here coming across the eastern third. Look at the ridging out to the west. This is why we, we're going to see things begin to dry out out here because we're going to shut down the flow here, all right? So there's that. That ridging is going to take place there. We got the first cold shot. Here comes the second next week. Notice the west coast. You guys are going to be drier out there, dry and warm. There's the second little piece of polar vortex. And then this big boy dumps down. That is the actual polar vortex. That is the actual, honest to God, big polar vortex there. What is that play here, folks? <clears throat> we got to watch this closer. We got its big ridging. So Alaska is going to get out of the icebox. They've been on the icebox for a long time, <clears throat> December especially. All right, where does this high set up here off the coast? If this thing's flat, this thing's not going to make a big intrusion. Only the northern tier are going to get in this. But if this high pressure is further north, goes closer to Greenland, then this cold air is going to come further south. Again, this is a long-range outlook. This is going out two weeks. This is going to change. But the, but the stratospheric warming has been there. We know we're going to get some ridging. We're going to get that. That's been pretty consistent out in the west. It's the east coast ridging that has been inconsistent. We don't know where that's going to be. So when we're dealing with the polar vortex, the, the forecast is going to be subject to change daily. Daily work. We're, we're heading to our colder pattern. I think that's pretty much locked in. We know we're going to get that at least back to more seasonable levels. Uh, but the level of cold air later in the month, that's going to be de to be determined. So wa we'll watch closely on this because if this cold dump like this comes further south, if this thing is sitting right in here, we're probably looking at some record record cold temperatures. But right now it's sitting over the Hudson Bay, not quite, just kind of skimming the northern tier states at that point. So we got we got a little ways to watch this. All right, something to stay tuned for for these updates. All right, so let's talk about the short term here. Uh, again, we've only got one major storm system bringing some decent rains. Once this goes by, we're back to a very dry weather pattern here, especially with the West Coast shutting down. So without the subtropical jet stream being active, which is not because of La Nina, uh, we're not going to get a whole lot, tremendous amount of moisture with this. So these systems will be typically moisture starved as they come on down. So as we go ahead and loop us on through, let this reset one more time. And as we track a couple of systems here. So we're going to track that, that system coming out on the plains, obviously. That's what we just talked about there. Bringing this neater rains here across the southeast. We'll definitely take that. That moves on into the northeast. And then we've got the cold air coming on down here uh, for this weekend. So this is, our, this is our initial cold shot coming on down here. That'll make it more seasonable here across the east. And then there's no big storm system next week. we got another little shot coming down here. Here's another weak system. A little clipper system coming down across the Great Lakes. Across the southeast, we get some rains across the south, the uh, areas of Florida there. And then we got another system on the 16th. Again, another clipper system dropping down into the middle of the, of the country there. So we got these consider we got at least at least uh, two other cold shots coming down down here the next 10 days. So I'm all right about the 10 days showing this map. I don't like going beyond 10 days because it's so subject to change. Again, weather's like a set of dominoes. One domino don't fall after it. Everything after it doesn't mean jack. So. Um, we'll, we'll see. Again, we're in that colder weather pattern here. Next 10 days, obviously, some beneficial rains here across the southeast. We'll take it here across the Great Lakes, the northwest. California's going to get a chance to dry out there a little bit as we go through the 16th of the month. Uh, snowfall, okay? We definitely see some more out of Intermountain. This is all higher elevation stuff, by the way. This is, uh, only at the higher elevations because it's still so mild out there in the west. Here across the Great Lakes, good snow totals here, taking out through the 16th. But I want to—I'll take this out to 360. This is not a forecast. I just want to kind of show the trend here, bringing more and more of the country in with snow. All right. So as we go beyond this, you see even the Mid Atlantic and even parts of the, uh, the Carolinas getting in on the action potentially later in the month. I don't. It all depends on the timing on everything right now. But what my point is is that we're heading toward. The, the last two weeks of the month, we're going to colder weather pattern. The variables at play will be the high pressure ridging off the, co off the east coast and if the subtropical ever gets its, its act going, because if that gets involved in any way, then we're looking at the better opportunities for jet stream phasing and, and better to get some storm systems to form. But again, that's could be, not will be. So we'll just continue to monitor that. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at your climate outlook here. We're going to go ahead and take a look at this. Again, the big story here. Uh, continues to be the very dry weather here. Let me back this up one more here. Uh, again, most of the country very dry here <clears throat> from the 12th to the 16th with dry weather there. Only the uh, high plains, South Florida, Texas showing the action there. And that pretty much holds here uh, going into the 20th because the West Coast is going to shut down big time there. So big, big time ridging there in the West. And we really need to get this weather pattern here in, in the East for sure. Now, as far as temperatures are concerned, 
above normal for a lot of the country, south of the, the southeast coast looking at where the below normal temperatures there, and then most of the east with turns normal. Now, this is going to be the wild card here, folks. This is the wild card because if that, if that uh, cold polar vortex comes on down, you're going to see a lot more blue on this map. Uh, maybe today, tomorrow, we'll see. Again, we're looking at model continuity in the days ahead. We can see a lot more blue on this map, especially the eastern half of the United States with that polar vortex disruption. All right, so we've got a lot to watch here. So again, this week, uh, getting a little more active now, <clears throat> looking at uh, the potential for severe weather the, there in the middle of the country in the southeast going into Thursday and Friday. We're going to track that closely. We got colder weather. We know that's coming. We're going to have that a uh, couple of nice little polar, polar shots coming down. And then the question mark, does the polar vortex make its presence drop into the, the low 48 or does it stay up in Canada? That's the question we got to watch and watch closely as we go through the next couple of weeks. All right, that gels up. Again, appreciate you guys checking us out. If you're not yet a subscriber, please do so. Hit that subscribe button at this time and hit that notification bell so you're alerted on future weather updates. All right, that's it for now. You guys take it easy. Be good, stay safe, and uh, we'll see you tomorrow. You guys have a great day. Bye-bye.